I have a, um, a list of a, of a few questions that I came up with here that I wanted to throw at uh, Mika. And so the Daves could, uh, could bounce their feelings and thoughts off of. Uh, Rodney went through the wormhole countless times. Uh, but I was always wondering, you know, were this thing real, Mika? Would we need some kind of containment vessel to prevent being ripped apart, considering what we know about about these things and what we can theorize? So there's a whole bunch of different ways of, of creating wormholes um, okay. in terms of, of what style you want. In Stargate, we use traversable wormholes using a Schwarzschild radius. Um, so we wanted it to be a specific size. Um, and the real key trick to them is that you need negative energy density in order to make them happen. And what negative energy density means is that you take vacuum and then you suck more out of it. And then surprise, you've got negative energy density. Scientifically works out, mathematically works out, engineering problem, eh, little bit of a- How to suck the vacuum out of a vacuum? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. how can yeah. you get nothing from already nothing? Just a teeny tiny engineering problem, but you know, I'm a scientist. I don't need to solve the engineering issues. That's, are people that's trying? Else's issue. Are people trying? I mean, there must be people trying or. Um, well, I mean, th that particular one would require a whole lot of energy to get to the point where wow. you can get negative energy density. Mm. Um, but that's that was like the, the, the basic building blocks of the Stargate wormholes. Mm. Um, but they had a lot of radiation to go with them. Okay. Um, in part because you're- See, you're that's why I'm losing that. my hair. <laughs> there we go. It was a, yeah. too much wormhole travel over time. That's it, yeah. Um, so that would be the challenge of that. Uh, it, we could come up with a couple of other ways of doing it. And we did actually have, um, we did experiment with what could other wormholes look like are in sometimes in the background equations. Um, and we did things occasionally like uh, we fed the um, energy of a solar flare into a black hole in order to get uh, time travel. Right. Which does, like, those are equations you can all fit together. Um, mm. There is nothing that breaks in the physics of that. Mm. Wow. It's just, why would you ever do it? Um, well, save Kennedy, and, of course. <laughs> Well, of course. Um, and then for time travel to work, you need to be traveling through space as well. Oh. But something I really, really love this, like this small, tiny little detail, um, is that in order to have um, time travel make sense, you, need, you can only get two out of three things. You can have cause and effect. This thing happens and then that thing happens. Mm. You can have time travel mm. where you change the order of events and time can go backwards. Or you can have the Doppler effect. So red shift, blue shift, or like when a, an ambulance goes by and it yeah. goes, woo, right? Mm. Um, with the pitch shifting, you can get two out of three in order to have a physically consistent universe. So mm. in Stargate, we don't have the Doppler effect for the most part. And we did, we cheated that in one episode. But mm. aside from that one episode, we just we have, have writers. the Doppler effect at all. Right. That's, that's how we solved the problem with writers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, totally so works. So, so we could, so we, we, we would need special equipment, you think, to, in order to, to get through? To protect us from radiation and stuff? Yeah, yeah because if like, we're going to release how, radiation. It depends on your health and safety standards. I mean, you can do most <laughs> things once. Um, and it would not like shred you as you go through. You wouldn't have to deal with like the spaghettification of dealing with black, black right. holes. But it's kind mm. of like how the sequel to The Martian is Everybody Dies of Cancer. Um, mm. that would, oh, that's kind of like the... The long-term right. issue with traveling through Stargate is too much as everyone's life expectancy gets lower. We might have issues like um, in the real life space programs, we actually limit how long astronauts can, uh, how long they can do flight missions because they have a lifetime radiation exposure limits. Mm. Um, so same sort of concept on that. And basically, as soon as you're out of the atmosphere, you're, you're toasting. Right? Is that is that basically it? Yeah, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not protected and like, by the as Earth. soon as you get outside yeah. of, um, so every time you see um, Northern Lights or Borealis, mm. that is happening because you have uh, charged particles from the sun hitting the Earth's magnetic field. The magnetic mm. field of the Earth is it's a shield. We have a giant shield that our planet very happily gives us. Mm. Um, and if you go outside that shield, then suddenly you get bombarded by all those charged particles. Wow. Um, and the space station is inside the magnetic. Field of the Earth, 
but the moon is not. So during the oh. Apollo missions, there was actually one of the backup plans was if there had been um, a coronal mass ejection, if the sun had burped and sent yeah. charged particles towards the earth and mm. given us a beautiful light show of or a borealis it would have also baked the astronauts mm. um and there would have been a just kind of like a well uh, oh well sorry we overcooked right. the astronauts yeah, yeah like whoopsies mm. um and that's one of the major major problems when we're talking about sending humans out into deep space exploration or even to the moon is that we need to have some sort of radiation shielding going on um, is there radiation is shielding on the the space station there must be to some extent isn't there I mean, because it or is it it doesn't need it it's, it, I mean, like, it's only 400, it's, what is it, 400 kilometers up or something? Yeah, it's, it's still yeah. inside the Earth's magnetic field, so we don't have to worry about the, the charged particle aspect of it. Oh, okay. Um, right. Although they okay. go over the northern lights and the southern right. lights, so you can see like the beautiful green blankets yeah. underneath. Yeah, uh, that's so cool. cool. Yeah. Um, the, but they have to worry more about collisions with things. So they have like blankets right. of Kevlar on the space station. Yeah, especially now with the Russians blowing up satellites and stuff. I think well, they're making it or, easier. One of the biggest causes of of um, damage to other satellites is paint flex. I've heard these little paint chips are like bullets. Yeah, because they're going supersonic speeds, right? Yeah. Like they're going, uh, they're falling at terminal. Like to be in orbit means something is falling around the Earth and missing constantly. So it's falling yeah. at escape velocity for the Earth. It always looks so peaceful, doesn't it? And the reality is just like it's like ah. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. But it's always like da 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 da. When the reality is, it's like just wow. <laughs> like, well, I and thought that the was cool. Earth is like this little teeny tiny little pebble in this entirely hostile universe. Mm -hmm. It's like the only the upside of space tourism is that maybe we can get a bunch of very rich and powerful people to realize that our planet is small and fragile and delicate, and we are all stuck here together, and there is no like. Yeah. Plan B, and if we cannot maintain habitability on the Earth, we will die anywhere else. Like yeah. going somewhere else is just death. Mm. Yeah, it's just terrible, terrible death. Well, that's why I like so, the robots going. I think like it feels like it just it doesn't feel like a job for bags of 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 chemicals. Like it feels like a like this is a this is a job for robots. Let's go and I love the idea of you were saying about the the you know the, the science being available to everybody. I mean the idea of being able to go to another planet without actually having to go to another planet is probably makes more sense anyways. That's why we have Malps in Stargate. That's know? it, Malps. It's, the Malp. I love the Malp. Very legitimate reason. Malp so. on a stick. Malp on yep. a stick. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I malp on the stick all the time, by the way. That's like, <laughs> of all the things that I learned from Stargate, I I will freaking tape a camera to anything. And I we had the roof to do. I had like a big stick up there with the camera on it. I, I love malp on a stick. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, it's, real life volcanologists should spend more time doing that same basic premise. It's I was originally did volcanology and I moved to landslides for my disaster specialization in part because volcanologists have this horrible, horrible, horrible culture of going towards the erupting volcano yeah. and then occasionally getting caught in an eruption. Yeah. So they have like the lowest life expectancy of any scientist. And I'm like, wow. no, 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 I am done with this. The summer they're like, hey, just go camp out on the side of a live volcano to monitor the eruption. And I'm like, what could go wrong? No. But what about all the gas Let's and stuff too? Like even just the, like the chances of like being poisoned as well is not a big issue. Oh, yeah. there. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.